Hey, welcome to Online Advantage. I'm Professor Gonzalez. The topic we're covering is discontinued operations. So when we're looking at the financial statements, remember we're always focusing on the usefulness of the financial statements. And if you think of investors and creditors, what's useful for them is to be able to see the separation between operations that are continuing so that they can predict the future and discontinued operations. A discontinued operation would be when a company is eliminating a segment. And an example of a segment would be possibly a region. Maybe they're eliminating a major product or a major division of a product. And the segment that they're eliminating, we have to be able to separate the revenue expense and the assets related to that segment. And the reason that they're eliminating has to be a strategic reason. Maybe that segment has had losses and they want to remove it. Maybe they're shifting their strategy and going away from certain products. So that's what we're focusing on is discontinued operations. We're going to look at the gain and sale of a discontinued operations when we've sold it in the current accounting period. And then we're going to look at a gain when we have it held for sale. So we haven't sold it, we've determined we're going to sell it, but we haven't sold it yet. In the very end, we're gonna look at disclosures required and how the balance sheet is presented. I'm gonna focus now on the income statement and looking at an example. So we have an example here it's September 1st um, and management has decided, that's the management of XYZ Soft Drink Company, they've decided to eliminate their snack food division. Uh, they decided that on January 1st. So we look at from January 1st to the date of when they're going to dispose of it. And we look at the profit or loss at that time. And in this example, they have an operating loss on the snack food division of $40 million. On the actual date of disposal, remember this is an actual sale. So they're actually selling the division. So, so they're selling it off to some other company. We look at the book value of the assets of that division and we compare it to how much we're selling it for. So here the book value is 10 million and we're selling it for 20 million. So as you can see, we have a gain. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the presentation of this situation on the income statement. Okay, so now we're gonna do an example. What I'm starting off here is with income from continuing operations. This is on the income statement. The very top part would be our regular revenue and our regular expenses to get to income from continuing operations. And then after that, I'm gonna put discontinued operations. So I'm gonna start with a header, discontinued operations. And I can combine the loss from discontinued operations with the gain on disposal and then do it a net tax benefit, or I can separate it out. I'm gonna separate it out. You're allowed to do it either way. So the first part is the loss from discontinued operations. And that was for $40 million from the problem. I'm gonna put that in parentheses to indicate that it is a loss. The next part is going to be the loss or the gain on disposal. This one's gonna be a gain. So when we dispose of the snack food segment, we're gonna compare the book value of the assets of that segment to how much we're selling it for. I sold it for $20 million. My book value was 10 million. Subtracting those two gives me a gain of 10 million. So I have a gain on disposal of 10 million. So I'm bringing that in as positive. Now what I'm gonna do is figure out the tax effect. We're gonna say the tax rate's 30%. So I'm gonna use a tax rate of 30%. I'm gonna net these two together to figure out how much is taxable. The negative 40,000 plus the 10,000 is a negative 30,000, 30 million. And then I'm gonna multiply that by the 30%. And that will give me 9 million. Now, because it's a loss, Remember that losses are tax deductible. So there's actually a tax benefit from the loss. So this is going to be a tax benefit. That will go in as a positive number. If it was a tax expense, it would go in as negative. Now I'm going to add these ones up here, the negative 40 plus the 10 plus the nine to get loss. In this situation, it's gonna be a loss from discontinued operations of 21 million. Then the very bottom line is net income. So now I'm combining the loss of 21 million with the income from continuing operations of 100 million to get net income of 79 million. 
So that is how it's represented on the income statement when we have a discontinued operation, a segment we discontinued and we actually sold it. Okay, so now we're going to change this prompt. We're going to change it so instead of having a loss from discontinued operations, we're going to have income from discontinued operations. So we have a positive income from the time that they, the beginning of the year to the time they disposed of it. So we're going to change that and just make it a positive 40 million. And I'm going to change the title to income from discontinued operations. We're keeping the disposal the same. So we still have the same book value. We're selling it for the same amount. And the thing that's going to change also is we're not going to have tax benefit anymore because the benefit relates to if we had a loss, because again, that would be tax deductible. So now I have to calculate the tax expense on the discontinued operation. So I have the 40 million and the 10 million. So we have 50 million, adding those two together, multiplying that by 30%, that's going to give me 15 million. That will be my tax expense. I'm going to put that in as a negative because it's going to be subtracted. Now I'm going to calculate all the discontinued operations. So we have the 40 million plus the 10 million minus the 15 million, and that it will give me 35 million gain this time because it's positive. Now I'm going to add that gain to the income from continuing operations to get a new net income of 135 million. So that was the discontinued operations, reporting it on the income statement. And in that situation, we had a gain instead of a loss. Now we're gonna look at another example. This situation, the discontinued operation, the division that we're discontinuing is held for sale, meaning at the end of the period, we still haven't sold it, but we plan on selling it. We sell the soft drink company. On September 1st, they've decided to sell the snack food division but they haven't sold it yet as of the year end, December 31st. So we look at the operating income from January 1st to the end of the year, and they have a loss of 40 million. At year end, we compare the book value of that division to the fair value, how much we could sell it for. And the book value is 20 million, but the fair value is 10 million. So we're gonna go ahead and do that example and look at how it would be represented on the income statement. Okay, so now let's look at how this is represented on the income statement. Again, we have income from continuing operations and then we go into discontinued operations. So we're still going to report the loss from discontinued operations of the 40 million. But because we didn't actually sell this division, but we anticipate selling it, it's called held for sale. In this situation, because our book value is higher than the amount we think we can sell it for, the fair value, we have to record what's called an impairment loss. So again, just as a reminder, the book value was 20 million and we plan on selling it for 10. So we end up with a loss of 10 million. And again, that's an impairment loss because it's, we didn't really sell it yet. Just like before, because we have a loss situation, we add these together and it's 50 million loss. We have to record the tax benefit of the loss. So taking the 50 million and multiplying that by the 30%, that is going to give us a $15 million uh, tax benefit. Now we're gonna combine the three, the negative 40, the negative 10, plus the 15, and that is going to give us a loss from discontinued operation of 35 million. Combining that, with the income from continuing operations will give us net income of 65 million. Okay, so that is the income statement. Also, we have to disclose the discontinued operation. In the disclosures, we have to explain the assets that we are disposing. We have to explain the revenue and expense streams, the reason for discontinuing the operation. And on the balance sheet, we have to record the assets for the segment that we're disposing in the current asset section because we plan on selling it next year. That is it. Thank you very much. Please click on Advantage logo to subscribe.